<clears throat> so the next uh, video on triple um, and hopefully the last one for now is to do with the third, uh, the second type of uh, polar coordinates, which are um, the spherical coordinates. Now, if you recall, in the spherical coordinates, what's going on is that you have um, some point, for instance, P uh, in space. Then what we usually do is, so there's your point P. Now, what we did before, what we've done before, is that we've used theta here in the xy plane. So you use the r cos theta, and this length would have been um, would have been r. Put it in pink. Okay, this is just uh, what's happening in the xy plane. So overall, though, actually, the real line is this white one. So or let's call it a blue. Now what we could do is we could also introduce another angle here, which is with the z-axis and we'll call it phi. So we've two angles, in fact, theta and phi. In the in cylindrical coordinates, we're just looking at the r theta coordinates in xy plane, and we leave z as it is. Now we're going to convert or try to convert all uh, the coordinates. If we say the length of this line is rho, which is the which will be the radius essentially, then the coordinates of p would become rho theta and phi. Now, how, do, how does this actually work uh, is as follows. If we, for the sake of argument, assume that um, this actually length is r, then the cylindrical coordinates um, x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Okay, so now if we look at this um, as this as a as a triangle, then what's going on is that basically um, this length was r as I said. So now what's happening is this uh, this triangle here, this angle, and of course is also phi, and this of course is a ninety degree angle because this is a perpendicular drop. So now what happens is that this z coordinate, actually, which is, in fact, uh, let's put another red line here, okay, which is, in fact, this length, okay, this is your z, the height, is, in fact, z equals rho cosine phi, okay, so z is rho cosine phi, and now if I look at the r here, okay, this r here, and phi, and there's your right angle, so that become <clears throat> that can be written as so let's say here r on the other hand is in fact rho sine phi the only other coordinates so now that we know that we can revise our coordinates and come up with the following we don't need this r anymore because it's replaced by rho sine phi okay and cosine theta as it is and y becomes of course again also rho sine phi and then sine theta, and z, of course, is as we've got it here, is rho cosine phi. So these constitute our spherical coordinates. These are called the spherical coordinates. Now, in this case, of course, rho squared is clearly x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay? So um, when we convert uh, uh, from the x, y, z coordinates, to the uh, rho theta phi, uh, what happens is, depending on the range of values of uh, uh, these three variables, let's say that if rho is between a and b, and we have phi uh, or theta between uh, c and d, and uh, phi is between uh, e and f. So if we have that situation, then this becomes, of course, f of um, x is going to be rho sine phi cos theta. Then this is, so that shows that that is convert, that converts in that way. And now you'd have this, of course, um, the Jacobian uh, rho squared sine phi, okay, d rho d theta d phi. So that's how we convert. Um, so the important thing, an important thing for you to note here is this piece here. 
is uh, like before we had the r d r d theta. In this case, you have rho squared sine phi, uh, rho squared sine phi d rho d theta d phi. And as you'll see, that's more likely than not because of the presence of the r being replaced by uh, rho sine uh, phi. So, so that's anyway uh, what we have basically as the conversion. Let's move further. Let's look at some examples. So this is the example we're looking at. Find the volume of the solid that lies above the cones equals um, the root of square x squared plus y squared, and below the uh, below the sphere x squared plus y squared uh, plus z squared equals z. Let's try this without drawing anything to figure out what is actually going on here. So basically, first of all, we know that this is a cone z equals uh, square root of x squared plus y squared. So it's going to be some kind of thing like this. And uh, at the top, it's going to be a, um, uh, a sphere, which might be something like this. So now the thing is, we have to find what kind of intersection points. I mean, I'm just saying this, it, it could be up or low or where they meet. So for the first thing is to figure out um, where this, uh, what the radius of the sphere is, for instance. That would be quite an important thing to do. You can do the following analysis, depending on... Um, how well you know this, bring the z back to this side and that complete the square then and you will end up with z minus a half in fact which means the center of the sphere is zero zero a half okay so that's uh, an important thing to know we also know that the um, that the intersection points now that that's when x equals y equals zero um, if we substitute that into our equation we get basically that uh, minus z equals zero, which means z into z minus one equals zero, which means that z equals zero and z equals one. We've got two intersection points. Uh, the situation. So what is happening, what is happening here is that we've got a sphere, in fact, that is something like uh, starting at zero and going up to one. And its center is zero, that's zero, zero, a half. So that's something we'd figured out. And this is a sphere, of course. This is a sphere. So and that's what's going on uh, at the moment, anyway. That's what we figured out from this, this analysis. As you can see, again, the drawing, very simple, straightforward, as we get clues about what it is that we want to find the volume of. So what is that solid? Right, so then, once we know that. Now, the other thing is, let's now let's turn our attention to the, uh, to the uh, the cone. Now when z, when x and y are zero, z is also zero. So when x equals y equals zero, this implies that z is equal to zero. So clearly there's an intersection point. Uh, it starts here. So that's your cones, um, essentially the, the bottom of the cone. Okay. And it goes up. Uh, it goes up, of course, and it will intersect um, with the, uh, the sphere. Now that intersection point is uh, what we want to find next. So what we will do is we will substitute z equals z equals x uh, square root. Uh, this implies that z squared is x squared plus y squared. So now if I substitute that into our um, equation of the sphere, it gives us that z squared plus z squared equals z, which means that you have essentially z into 2z minus 1 equals 0 which implies that z is equal to zero. That's an intersection point with the cone, and it also intersects it at z equals a half. So that means what we're looking at is this is our cone here. So we've got, we figured out now what it is that we are to uh, find the volume of. Now, uh, let, let's start using our coordinates here. So um, uh, if we convert, first of all, let's take our sphere. And let's put in our um, spherical uh, coordinates. So this will become rho squared is equal to rho uh, cosine phi. Okay, so rho squared is equal to rho cosine phi, which implies that rho is equal to cos phi. So that basically represents our sphere. Now, uh, let's uh, move a little ahead. Now that's our sphere, so that's our sphere, okay, which was this one here, this. So next, let's put it into the cone, 
and the cone equa the cone's equation will become, of course, uh, z is rho cos phi. So rho cos phi, okay, equals. See, this is what we're doing. Uh, square root of um, rho squared sine squared phi. Okay, cos squared theta. And then you'll have plus rho squared sine squared phi sine squared theta. Okay, and that, if you see here, you've got a rho squared, rho squared common, and you've got sine squared phi, sine squared phi common. If we take that out, we get cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, which just gives us rho sine phi after the square root, which means that which means that cosine phi equals sine phi, and that happens when phi is equal to pi over 4. What we have, essentially, is, uh, first of all, our theta in the coordinates. Now, our theta, in, along the xy, you'll see this is this, this circle, which is the head of the cone, the top of the cone where it intersects the sphere, that's a circle, and there your theta, and that's in the xy plane, remember, is theta is uh, between 0 and 2 pi, so that will be our theta. Now, then, our r, the radius, or rho, I should say, sorry, rho is going to be the radius of the sphere. Now, the radius of the sphere, so this means that we have a sphere of radius, um, half, radius half, center, zero, zero, half. Sorry about that, my apologies. Uh, that's here, okay, over here, let me show you. So here it is, let's just make that a little bigger so we can see it again. So this is our sphere. Now, if you see here, this is the bottom of the sphere. So your, um, your row, which means the radius starts at zero, and then it goes up, to, uh, it goes up by uh, a variable, actually. And it goes up by the variable uh, cosine phi because if you see here, um, rho is cosine phi. So it starts at zero and then goes up to cosine phi. Okay. I hope that's clear. So that means that our rho is between zero and cosine phi. And that leaves the last bit, which is the uh, phi angle itself. Now, phi is going to be, of course, between um, 0 again, because the cone starts at 0, and it goes up to pi over 4. So, that's. And now we're ready to do our integration. Our integral is going to be, so, 0 to 2 pi. And then we'll do phi next, so it's 0 to pi over 4. And we'll do... Um, Row last, I mean first, I mean, sorry, 0 to cosine phi. Which, and of course, uh, since we're looking at the volume of this, there's nothing, um, there's no function here except 1. So it's going to be rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Okay, and that works out to be, so that's what that's going to be. And um, so that will be sine phi cos cube theta. Now, of course, that's just going to be um, cos 4. And that becomes, in fact, 0 to 2 pi. So that's uh, 1 16 d theta, which is then just equal to pi over 8. And that's our final answer. Where e is a solid hemisphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared less than or equal to 9. So. Here we'll use uh, definitely use the spherical polar coordinates. Rho is in fact going to be between zero and three. Okay. In, ad in addition, our theta for sure is going to be between zero and two pi. But our because it's a hemisphere, our angle phi is going to be between uh, zero and pi over two. In fact. Okay, because um, the full sphere is when phi is between 0 and pi. So half of it would be phi is between 0 and pi over 2. Okay. 
so phi is between 0 and pi over 2. So now we then let's convert and our integral then uh, the 9 minus x squared minus y squared becomes a 9 minus uh, rho sine phi sine squared phi sine squared theta uh, as rho squared of course minus rho squared uh, sine squared phi cos squared theta now that becomes just 9 minus um, rho squared sine squared phi and therefore our integral becomes is going to be uh, 0 to 2 pi for the theta, 0 to pi over 2 for phi, and 0 to 3 for rho, and therefore we will end up with um, 9 minus 9 minus rho squared sine squared phi into uh, rho squared um, rho sine squared, sorry, rho squared sine phi, uh, which is the conversion part that um, is the Jacobian, in fact, and d theta d phi, d theta d phi, right? So if we integrate that, that's going to be that d phi d theta, which we can then easily integrate again. The in integrals are very simple here. If we go with the phi, it's just sine phi one cos phi and the other one will replace with 1 minus cos squared phi into sine phi and then substitute the cos phi so it's quite simple to do and that will work out to be so you know that which then will work out to be just 486 over 5 pi okay that's it